Good morning. Uh, it is Sunday this morning. It is a self-filmed uh, reflection. Um, it's unfair even on teenage labor to expect them to be doing filming at this hour of a Sunday morning. I had so much to think about and to reflect on and to talk about uh, this being a Sunday. And most often in the work I do, we are blessed to spend quite a lot of the day at Mahatma Gandhi's house in Inanda, in Bombay, in KwaZulu-Natal. The name of his house is called Sarvodaya, uh, which means well-being for all. It was burnt down in the 1985 Inanda riots, but was subsequently rebuilt and is now an absolute haven for reflection, to think and to walk and to work where Gandhi once worshipped uh, is a very special time in the week. We were watching a, a community gathering and in that gathering there was some washing taking place. Uh, Sunday it was a beautiful day, it was perfect, a slight breeze and really hot uh, for the drying of that washing. There were four tubs placed around and some children started to jump into these tubs and use their feet to extract all the dirt out of the denims. And as they did so, they formed this wonderful game. It was a game of chase and catch. And, and of course, the spills from, <laughs> from these tubs meant that there were some human spills too. And every time they got back into these tubs, they brought in more mud. And the old Gogo who was watching this actually just smiled. And she really enjoyed watching them at play. She didn't berate them at the time. And maybe she thought um, there was just... Next Sunday was going to be another day for washing anyway. She was really in the moment and enjoyed being in that moment. There were two other instances that week which really formed a pattern. And maybe the pattern was about influence. Um, the honey-eyed glare or stare of a lioness caused Land Rovers to part as if by Moses' instruction, the Red Sea was parting. And this stare caused that kind of action without a single word. The rangers just inherently knew to back off, to create a space in the way that this lioness moved and the way she stared at us through those honey eyes. And then later in one of the lectures, uh, a gecko uh, just dropped down from the ceiling and landed on the, the desk in front of us. It caused quite a stir. It was, an uns, uh, it was a surprising act. And furniture was knocked over. Coffee stains emerged. People panicked. Uh, there was this new intruder that had just quietly dropped in uh, on one of our lectures in the, in the LARPA. We always thought, what, what was the conversation like back in the, in the gecko's home? You know, Dad, how did you do that? How did you cause panic? How did you move furniture? How did you spill coffee stains? And nobody slept during Mick's lecture. How did you manage all of that? And perhaps the gecko's response might have been, well, I just dropped in on a conversation and I was just being myself. And so this idea of authentic influence may be through how grandchildren influence their grandparents it may be just through the honey-eyed stare of a lioness. And it may just be from a gecko that drops in on a conversation. I was really moved to watch our president when he struggled with his own face mask a couple of nights ago. Come out the very next day and laugh at himself and with each other as opposed to laughing at others and with himself. It was a moment of great humanity and a, and a moment of great authenticity. And I, for one, felt deeply influenced by that. And so today, perhaps being Sunday, I wish you sarvodaya, well-being for all. And tomorrow is a very special day being Freedom Day. And I hope to be able to talk about a very special person who has influenced us all. Have a wonderful Sunday and well-being for all.